Welcome back guys. In this video I'll be looking at differentiating inverse trigonometric functions. First of all we need to know about the domain and range of y equals sine x, y equals cos x, y equals tan x in order to appreciate the domain and range for y equals arc sine x, y equals arc cos x and y equals arc tan x. Let's have a look at y equals sine x. Now y equals sine x has an inverse. I repeat y equals sine x has an inverse if and only if y equals sine x is 1 to 1. If and only if x is more than or equal to minus pi over 2, but less than or equal to pi over 2. If we look at this restriction over here and we sketch the graph, we can see that the graph is 1 to 1. Let's move on to y equal cos x. Now y equal cos x has an inverse if and only if y equal cos x is 1 to 1. If and only if x is more than or equal to 0 but less than or equal to pi. With this restriction, after sketching the graph, we can see that the graph is 1 to 1. Let's look at y equal tan x. Now y equal tan x has an inverse if and only if y equal tan x is 1 to 1. If and only if x is more than minus pi over 2 but less than pi over 2. With this restriction, after sketching the graph, we can see that the tan x graph is now 1 to 1. Okay, let's go back to y equals sine x. We've got the domain for which y equals sine x has an inverse. What is the range? Well, the range is just y is more than or equal to minus 1, but less than or equal to 1. Let's look at y equal cos x. We've got the domain for which y equal cos x will have an inverse. What is the range? Well, the range will just be y is more than or equal to minus 1, but less than or equal to 1. y equal tan x, we've got the domain for which y equal tan x has an inverse. What is the range? Well, we can see that the range y will just be any real number. Okay, because y goes to positive infinity and to negative infinity. Okay guys, now I'm going to recap a very important rule about the domain and range of the inverse function. First of all, what is the domain of the inverse function? The domain of the inverse function is the range of the original function. Secondly, what is the range of the inverse function? The range of the inverse function is just the domain of the original function. So using this particular concept, we can now define the domain and range of the inverse function of y equals sine x, the inverse function of y equals cos x, and the inverse function of y equals tan x. So starting off with y equals arc sine x. The domain is given here, the range is given here. Next, y equal arc cos x, the domain is given over here, the range is given over here. Third one, y equal arc tan x, the domain is given over here, the range is given over here. You need to know the domain and range of the inverse trigonometric functions when it comes to differentiating them. So it's very important. Here's an exam style question. Given that y is equal to arc sine x cubed plus 2x, Find dy with dx in terms of x. Well, the first step is to rewrite this equation in the following form. y equal sine inverse x cubed plus 2x. The second step is to apply sine on both sides. So if I do this, I get sine y equals sine sine inverse x cubed plus 2x. Now sine and sine inverse are inverses of each other, so they cancel out to give me sine y equal x cubed plus 2x. This is an implicit equation because neither x nor y is the subject of the equation. So we have to use implicit differentiation. If you don't know how to use implicit differentiation, I would advise you to check out my video 9.8. Okay, so the first term over here, sine y, I'm going to differentiate this with respect to x. So I get cos y, then I need to stick in dy over dx. Equal to x cubed, I differentiate that with respect to x, I get 3x squared. Plus 
2x, I differentiate that with respect to x, I get 2. Now, I can make dy over dx the subject, and if I do this, I will get dy over dx is equal to 3x squared plus 2 all over cos y. Now, I want dy over dx in terms of x, so I need to eliminate the cos y. So, how do I do this? Okay, now, sine squared y plus cos squared y is equal to 1. Okay, so cos y is equal to plus or minus square root 1 minus sine squared y. I know what sine y is equal to, it is x cubed plus 2x. So I can replace the sine y with x cubed plus 2x to give me cos y is equal to plus or minus square root 1 minus in bracket x cubed plus 2x squared. The question is, do I take the positive or the negative square root? For this, I need to go back to what the range is for y equal arc sine. The range for y equal arc sine, we know it's more than or equal to minus pi over 2, but less than or equal to pi over 2. So if I was to draw a cast diagram, the y value will fall into either the c quadrant or the a quadrant. Now in the c and a quadrant, cosine is positive, so I need to take the positive square root. So cos y is equal to the positive square root of 1 minus, in bracket, x plus 2x squared. So now I can replace this cos y with square root 1 minus, in bracket, x cubed plus 2x squared, to give me dy over dx is equal to 3x squared plus 2 all over square root 1 minus, in bracket, x cubed plus 2x squared. And that there is my dy over dx in terms of x. Here's another exam style question. Given that y is equal to arc cos x multiplied by e to the power x, find dy over dx in terms of x. The first step is to rewrite this particular equation in the following form. y equal cos inverse x multiplied by e to the power x. The next step is to apply cos on both sides, and if I do this, I get the following result. Cos y equal cos, cos inverse, x multiplied by e to the power x. Now cos and cos inverse are inverses of each other, so they cancel out to give me the following. Cos y equal x multiplied by e to the power x. This over here is an implicit equation because neither x nor y is the subject of the equation. To differentiate this implicit equation, I need to use implicit differentiation. If you don't know how to use implicit differentiation, I would advise you to check out my video 9.8. Okay, the first term cos y, I'm going to differentiate this with respect to x, and this will give me minus sine y dy over dx equal x multiplied by e to the power x, I want to differentiate this with respect to x. So I need to use the product rule for differentiation. And if I use the product rule, I get the following result. x multiplied by the derivative of e to the power x, which is just e to the power x, plus e to the power x multiplied by the derivative of x, which is just 1. I can just clean this up and write the following. Minus sine y dy over dx is equal x e to the power x plus e to the power x. Now I can make dy over dx the subject, and if I do this, I get the following result. dy over dx is equal x e to the power x plus e to the power x divided by minus sine y. I need dy over dx in terms of x, so I need to eliminate the sine y. Sine squared y plus cos squared y is equal to 1. I'm going to make sine y the subject, and if I do this, I get sine y equal to plus or minus square root 1 minus cos squared y. I know what cos y is though, guys. It is x multiplied by e to the power x. So I can replace cos y with x multiplied by e to the power x to give me sine y is equal plus or minus square root 1 minus, in bracket, x multiplied by e to the power x squared. Okay, now I need to decide if sine y is the positive square root or the negative square root. Okay, so what do I do now? I go back to the range for y equal arc cos, and the range is y is more than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to pi. Why do I go back to the range of y equal arc cos? 
because I'm differentiating y equal r cos. So y is more than or equal to zero, but less than or equal to pi. That means that the y value will fall in the a quadrant or in the s quadrant, and in both of these quadrants, sine is positive. So I need to take the positive square root to give me sine y is equal square root one minus in bracket x e to the power x squared. So I can replace the sine y with square root 1 minus in bracket x e to the power x squared. And if I do this, I get dy over dx is equal x e to the power x plus e to the power x all over minus square root 1 minus in bracket x e to the power x squared. So that there is my dy over dx in terms of x. Here is another exam style question. Given that y is equal to arctan 4x, find dy over dx in terms of x. The first step is to rewrite this particular equation in the following form. y equal tan inverse 4x. The next step is to apply tan on both sides, and if I do this, I get the following result. Tan y is equal tan, tan inverse 4x. Now tan and tan inverse are inverses of each other, so they cancel out to give me tan y equal 4x. Tan y equal 4x is an implicit equation, so to differentiate this, I need to use implicit differentiation. Like I said before, if you don't know how to use implicit differentiation, check out my video 9.8. Tan y, I'm going to differentiate that with respect to x, and if I do this, I get sec squared y dy over dx equal 4x. I differentiate this with respect to x, I get 4. Now, I can make dy over dx the subject, and if I do this, I get dy over dx is equal 4 over sec squared y. This is in terms of y. I want dy over dx in terms of x. I can use an identity that connects tan and sec, and that identity is 1 plus tan squared y is equal sec squared y. So, I know what tan y is. It is 4x. So, I can write sec squared y is equal 1 plus tan squared y, which is 4x squared, and that will be 16x squared. So I can replace the sec squared y with 1 plus 16x squared to give me dy over dx is equal to 4 over 1 plus 16x squared, and that there is my dy over dx in terms of x. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe.